Hey everybody, it's me again, Chicken Noobel, and here's a video that covers some of the more social sides of Guild Wars 2 and the different ways players can communicate in-game. I almost didn't release this video because my mom had since learned how to do some of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about here, but as I was recording some footage, I ran into this guy who was brand new to the game. He asked why I was showing up on his map, and after a short conversation, he asked if he could friend me, but he didn't know how. This video is for new players to Guild Wars 2 and will cover some very basic things for those who are new to MMOs in general. I do have some things in here that veterans in my guild didn't know, so stick around if you're a veteran. You might learn something or not. That's cool too. Today we're exploring the chat window, the chat commands, chat links, emotes, mentors, the friend, follower, and blocked lists, and finally the mail system. When necessary, I'll cover the free-to-play restrictions on these different features, since you free-to-play guys and gals are greatly limited. Remember, I've got referral links in the description if you wanted to remove those restrictions and get the game for yourself, or if you wanted to gift the code to your friends or your family. As always, subbing to the channel helps me out, so as the popular kids would say, smash that subscribe button and stuff. Guild Wars 2 is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. It'd be pretty lonely for a multiplayer game if you couldn't communicate with all the other adventurers that you meet. Fortunately, ArenaNet has given you a way of communicating via the chat window. The chat window is how you're going to communicate with a majority of the players that you meet. The chat window has five areas of interest, and we'll quickly look at each of these features. Display and position of the window, configuration, tabs, text box, and the channel selector. The chat window, by default, is located in the lower left corner of your screen. If you wanted to move the chat window around, you can grab here on the window and then drag it upward or downward while holding your left mouse button. You know that the window can be moved when you see this hand icon and when the white border appears in the other area on the screen. The window can also be resized by grabbing the corner with your left mouse button and then moving it around as you want. The window can also be shown or hidden by clicking this button in the corner or by pressing the backslash key on your keyboard. Hidden windows will still show chat, but it's going to be with a transparent background until you engage the window, show it, or start typing. The chat window can also be configured using this cog. The cog will let you adjust the text size and profanity filter settings. You can also change whether you show timestamps, channel tags, in-world bubbles, or only limit chat to English. Along the top of the window are tabs. Your chat window can be organized into tabs, and you can add additional tabs if you would like. To add a tab, you just have to click this plus icon right here. For each of the tabs, you configure the type of chat that appears in it. So by clicking this drop-down icon on a tab, you'll see a menu with checkboxes and flyout menus, as well as a way to rename the tab at the top. Give it a name and check the stuff that you want to show in that tab. I personally like having separate loot and combat tabs so I can see what Deadeye skills killed me from across a map or so I can see the insane amount of loot that I'm getting while farming. Just adjust these to your liking. The chat box is where players can actually type messages to other players. By pressing enter, you're going to engage the chat box for whatever channel you have selected. And if you press enter again after typing something, the message will send to that channel. Channels, for the curious, are like chat rooms. We're going to be getting more to that in a few seconds. If you engage the chat box and press enter without typing anything in, you're just going to cancel that engagement. And finally, we have a channel selector, which is this bracketed word to the left of your chat box. The channel selector tells you which channel your message is going to be sent to. If you click on the word, a list of the available channels will appear. You can select a channel from this list, or you can also type in a channel command before typing a message to switch channels. The channels in the game each have different purposes. I'm going to cover guild, team, and squad channels in another video about those groups, so for now we're just going to be looking at Say, Map, Party, and Whisper. Say is a channel that broadcasts messages to players near your character. Think about conversationally speaking in person instead of with a megaphone. The channel can be accessed by typing slash say or slash s in the chat window and will appear as a green label with white text. Map is the channel for the current map that you're on and is often how players coordinate during events, ask for help, or let other players know where things are happening. This channel has a red label with light pink text and can be accessed by typing slash map or slash m in the chat window. 
party is how you communicate with your party. I'm going to be covering this a little bit more in the next video. The channel can be accessed by typing slash party or slash p, and it's going to have a blue label with light blue text. And Whisper is the channel for private messages or direct messages, which are PMs and DMs, if you're familiar with those terms. To send a Whisper, you can right-click on a character's portrait and select Whisper, or you can type slash Whisper or slash W. If you type the command, you will have to type the character's name in the box right here. For the names that have strange characters like umlauts and tildes, using the right click option is probably going to be best. If you want to reply to a whisper, type slash r for reply and you'll send a message back to the last person that messaged you. Whispers are shown in a purplish or pinkish text. Now free to play accounts have some chat restrictions. Free to play accounts cannot use map chat, can only whisper people on the same map, except for mutual friends and can only whisper a new person every 30 seconds. Chat commands are things that you can type into the chat window to see various bits of information. We already looked at a few of these moments ago when we were talking about the different channels, but there are a few more. Slash age will show you how long you've been playing Guild Wars 2 in total, as well as how long you've been playing your character. This is super useful when you want to remind yourself that you could have been learning a foreign language when you see that you've racked up thousands of hours in game. Slash deaths will show how many times your character died. It's a running total for your character. It's a good reminder for how many times you've failed while playing. Slash time shows the in-game time of the game world. The day-night cycle takes two hours to fully complete in-game. So when you see the time after typing this command, that's the Tyrian time, not Earth time. And maybe the most important chat command in the game, slash wiki. By typing slash wiki and then something afterward, your browser will open up and show that wiki page. You can type in map locations, item names, quest titles, NPC names, boon or condition titles. Literally anything related to Guild Wars 2 can be typed in here. You can also use slash wiki in conjunction with chat links. What are chat links, you ask? Let me tell you. Chat links are special messages that players can interact with in the chat window. Chat links can be created for points of interest, waypoints, weapons, armor, items, skills, traits, effects, and builds. Chat links appear as bracketed words that will either be gold or a color that represents that item's rarity. Mousing over any linked skill, item, trait, or effect will show you the tooltip for that thing. Mousing over armor and weapons will also show upgrades to that item, as well as right-clicking on the linked armor or weapon will let you preview that item on your character. If you see a linked build, mousing over it will show a different tooltip that details which skills and specializations that build is using, as well as give you some other options if you were to right-click that build in chat. Chat links for points of interest and waypoints won't have detailed tooltips. These links, when clicked, will zoom the world map into that location. This is going to be useful when you're communicating with other players, for telling them where you're at or where other players should be going or where events are happening. Often, you'll see players use cardinal directions with these types of links. So if you ask somebody, where am I going to find the fire elemental? Somebody might reply in map chat with, go west of the Meridian Waypoint, where Meridian Waypoint is a chat link. To create chat links, you have a couple different options. First, when clicking through different Guild Wars 2 websites, like the wiki or build websites, you might find codes that look something like this. These are chat link codes. Simply copy this code and then paste it into your chat box. When you hit enter, the chat link will be made. A second option is to hold left control and then left click the icon associated with anything that I mentioned before. Whether it's something in your bags, on the map, your skill bar, something in the hero panel, or maybe a build from your build list, that thing will automatically be sent to whatever channel you have selected. And the third, most useful way for chat linking is just to hold left shift and left click those same things. The chat link will appear in the chat box, allowing you to insert the chat link into a sentence or link multiple items into a single message. Like I mentioned before, this is useful for accessing the wiki. If you type slash wiki, then put a space, insert your chat link, and then press enter, the wiki page for that linked item will open in your browser.
Okay, just for fun, there are several chat commands that you can use to cause your character to act in an expressive way. These are called emotes. Many emotes are available on all accounts, but other emotes require players to unlock them, either through the gem store or by completing achievements in-game. If you want to see the full list of emotes, and also see which are locked on your account, you can type slash emote list. The emotes are mostly for fun. There are a few places in the game where you can use emotes on objects or NPCs, and they'll do things. For instance, you can slash salute on a char statue or slash kneel before Norn shrines to get some boons. Or you can slash threaten ornery crabs and they'll turn into hermit crabs. If you want to flex your role-playing muscles, you can also type slash me and then some text. Slash me would be replaced with your name, so the chat window would display to other players that you're doing some action. Also, you can use the at symbol for a target. So if you wanted to threaten another player, you can type slash threaten at while having that player targeted, and the chat window would show your character threatens that character's name. These are some fun little tricks for you as you're finding new ways to communicate with players in the game. Now that you know about using chat and how to use chat links, I want to tell you about a special breed of player, the mentor. Mentors are players who volunteer their time to answer questions and assist new players. Mentors will appear in chat with the word mentor before their character name, and they'll also get an apple above their head and they appear on the minimap with this icon. Mentors want to help you. They're often experienced and knowledgeable about the game, and if they don't have a direct answer to whatever your question is, they can probably direct you to a resource that might help. Lean on the mentors when you see them be sure to ask them questions if you have something you need to ask. Whenever I'm in a low-level zone, I always tag up for a mentor because I want you to have a good experience when you're starting out. In time, if you ever feel confident enough to be a mentor to other new players, under the party menu, you can press the mentor button. Let's say you've been running around the game for a while and you met a mentor or some other chill people as you're playing. Wouldn't it be cool if you could keep in touch with them to start building some relationships with other people in the world? Forming friendships, I guess? That's what your friends list is for. If you press Y on your keyboard, you'll open up the contacts and looking for group window. Here, you'll see four tabs. The first is your friends list. All the people that you want to keep in touch with can be added here. When someone is on your friends list, you can see messages when they log in and out, you can see which map they're on, you can see how many achievement points they have, and you'll also have a nice UI where you can right-click names to invite players to parties or send messages. To add someone to the friends list, you just type their name in the box up at the top of this window. Or, you can right-click their name in chat or on their character portrait and select add friend. Or, you can type in slash friend followed by the character's name. There's a lot of different ways you can add people to your friends list. You're going to meet a lot of friendly people in the game. Guild Wars 2 has a really good community. Unfortunately, not everybody you meet is going to be friendly. Sometimes you're going to meet some a**s that want to ruin your time. ArenaNet has given you a block list so you can minimize communication with people who are just too much. When someone is on the block list, you won't see them in map chat, you won't be able to whisper them, and they can't whisper you or send you mail. It's almost like a black hole for toxicity. To add someone to the block list, you can do the same stuff as if you're adding them to the friend list, but instead say block, or do it from the block list, not the friend list. The chat command for blocking someone is slash block and then the character name. Unfortunately, if you block someone, they can still keep you on their friends list, and then they can see where you are, so they might show up in game. You just won't see anything that they're saying, but you'll see their avatar. It's not a perfect solution, but it helps. One option you have for being harder to find is setting yourself to invisible by using this thing in the corner. For really egregious behavior, in addition to blocking players, you can also right-click their name or portrait and then report them to ArenaNet using the Report option. The last list I'm going to cover in this window right now is the Follower list. This list shows all the people who added you to their friends list but aren't on your friends list. I don't find much use for this feature because I don't know most of the people who are following me. You can't control who is on this list, the best you can do is either friend them or block them. I just ignore that list completely though, so don't get hung up on that. Whichever list you're looking at, it's all going to show the same type of information. You're going to see online status, character name, map, 
and achievement points. Now, one thing you may find useful is the ability to set nicknames for people on these lists. All you have to do is right-click their name and select the nickname option. The mail system in Guild Wars 2 is similar to email. It can be used for sending and receiving messages, items, and coin to and from players, and it's also how the game delivers gem store purchases, map exploration messages, dungeon unlocks, personal story information, festival announcements, and more to your characters. The system is straightforward and very basic, so I'm not going to explain all the features in detail because you had to use email to sign up for the game, so I'm assuming you know the basics of email. To access the mail system, click the envelope in the top left corner of the screen. The envelope will look like this, or like this if you have unread mail. Received mail is on the left, and the content is on the right. To send mail, you can click the Compose button in the mail window. You can also right-click a character portrait or a character name that shows in the player list, or in the chat window, and then select Send Mail. The Compose window will let you enter a subject, message, attach coin, or up to five items by dragging items from your inventory to these five squares. Just be careful that you don't drag them outside of these squares because then the game will think that you're trying to delete the items. You can also right-click an item that isn't account or soul bound in your inventory and select Send a Player to mail the item that way. If a player or the Black Lion Trading Company sends you an item or gold, you can simply press the Take All button to take those items. If someone sends you things that you don't want, then you can press the Return to Sender button. Now the system has a lot of limitations. You can only have 10 messages in your inbox at a time. You can't mail items to characters on your account. You can't see messages that you sent to other players. There is no guild integration, so you can't send messages to all your officers. You can only send two messages every two minutes to prevent spamming. Your account can only receive 500 gold per week via mail, and anything over that amount is held in a queue. And there aren't any protections or collect on delivery features for player to player mail transactions. If you and another player agree to a trade and you send them an item, it's possible that they don't uphold their end of the deal and send the money or items in return. Free to play accounts and new accounts have even more restrictions. Free to play accounts can only mail players that have you on their friends list, which is kind of funny because moments ago I said there wasn't really a need for the follower list, but I guess here it is. New paid accounts need to wait 7 days before they can send attachments. You can only send mail once one character on your account has reached level 6. And finally, the amount of coin that you can send on new accounts slowly increases as you play the game more, so you're limited on what you can send if you're a new player. The restrictions are in place to protect the player base from scammers and gold sellers, which is a pretty big problem in other games. Other games are rampant with spam and people trying to get your information or sell you gold. You know the games I'm talking about, where a player named XVVGYOOPIWQDDD messages you for cheap gold or shady websites. Fortunately, these restrictions have greatly reduced that nonsense in Guild Wars 2, so although this feels pretty draconian, it seems to work really well. Well anyways, this was a pretty basic video. I think I covered most everything about communicating with players in the game. In the next videos, I'm going to be looking at parties, raid squads, squads, teams, guilds, and I'm going to cover more chat commands in the context of those videos. For now, I just hope this helps some people out. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, drop some comments, press the thumbs up buttons if you like pressing thumbs up buttons, and use the referral links if you don't have the expansions. Also, let's connect on Facebook or Twitter. I share my content there from time to time, and that's also where I announce my community giveaways, so make sure you follow me over there. Anyways, until next time.